Hi, my name is Mike, but you can call me Ken. Introducing the K63 Red Switch from Corsair. I have used this keyboard for about 4 years now, and it served me well. But lately, the keyboard got an annoying problem. And I have tried numerous ways to fix it, but nothing has worked so far. So, I want to upgrade to something better that can last 3 to 4 years down the road. I scouted information online for my new keyboard and found out that a whole new world exists in the mechanical keyboard space. The custom mechanical keyboard, the case, the switch, the keycaps, and many more can be customizable to some extent, depending on the owner's preferences. This may well be the beginning of a rabbit hole that sent me into madness. So, let's get started. Meet MKS70, a TKL keyboard from FL Esports. This is a bareboard kit, which means it does not come with keycaps and switches. At the time of making this video, the price is kinda strange. In Vietnam, the white only version sells for 900k Vietnam dong, which is about $40. But on international sites, such as Drop, KV Republic, or AliExpress, the kit ranges from $58 to $73. The 3 mode version will release near the end of November this year and will be priced at 1.3 million Vietnam dong, about $57. I can't find any international site that has information about this one yet. You can buy the product in the description below. This kit I have here is the white version only. Inside the box, we have the plastic cover. Please don't throw it away. Use it to cover your keyboard when inactive. The kit itself uses manual in English and Chinese. 2-in-1 switch keycap pull tool and the Type-C to Type-A cable Onto the board itself The case is made of plastic It's pretty solid in my opinion However, I find just a tiny bit of wobble when squeezing or bending it But it's not a deal breaker Let's go to the back side of the keyboard This RGB Although not very bright in my opinion All board variants can shine through except the white version On top, there are two kickstands covered with rubber even when propped up or down in addition, there are three rubber feet in the bottom, making the board sit quite firmly on the desk when used. The PCB has three Type-C connectors, but no pass-through. This means that you cannot utilize the other two ports for things like charging your device or connecting other devices through your keyboard to your computer. And it will just sit there waiting for you to someday change the position of your cable. I can't even plug in my own cable because the area is too small. Others might find it handy if they change the board from time to time, but I find this design somewhat redundant and ruins the aesthetic of this board when looking to the side. There is a form sit between the plate and the PCB to reduce the space between those two, resulting in a quieter switch sound and reducing some ping noise. This kit is hot swappable, allows you to install and swap any switches that you desire. Plus, it's a south-facing LED indicated by this white box shape which doesn't cause any interference with Cherry Profile keycaps. It doesn't have brighter RGB shine through as no facing, but I rarely turn the keyboard on RGB rainbow shade, especially when working, so I don't mind. The same goes with the 3-mode version. Hello, Future Kin here. Just recently, the 3-mode version of this kit I just said earlier has no facing LD. What the fuck? There are legends printed on the PCB, which I find no use at all because logically, I want to put in all my switches first, then install the keycaps, and you can't really see any legends when those switches are already on top of it. The stops are pre looped and this board supports PCB stabilizers, including snap in and screw in. Now, onto the building part. For switch, I'll be using the Alco CS Matcha Green, and for the keycaps, I'll go with the Alco Matcha Red Bean. Here's the assembly montage. Enjoy.
Since I don't want to keep this video going without talking, I'll leave the sound test at the end. So now, let's talk about functionality. As you can see, in the back of the keyboard, it said anti-ghosting or key. Some board will have NKRO instead, which stands for NP Rover, basically the same thing. It allows you to register all of its keys being pressed simultaneously. There's a bunch of key combinations that you can use by following the user's menu. To be honest with you guys, I haven't fully utilized all of them, and some, by default, just doesn't make sense. For example, the Fn plus F1 bring up the default player, but it makes much more sense to just double click on the video to watch it rather than open the player and have to import a clip into it. And there is no option to change it via the app, which is kinda dumb. Speaking about the app, here it is. It used to only have Chinese, but you can switch between English and Chinese with the recent update. The app is straightforward to use on both app mode and onboard editor mode. App mode is the default mode, which allows you to remap the key for a different function. For example, I changed my print screen key to radar profile and my pause break key to repo mode. Onboard editor is app mode plus grant you access to the FN1 layer, which basically opens up a whole new keyboard layer for you to remap. Note that you can only use one mode at a time, and onboard editor mode cannot use key react effects such as Aurora, Ripple, Reactive, etc. Overall, the app is really easy to use and opens room for its board, especially the FN1 layer, which is really handy for editing videos. Before we move on to the final review, I want to point out some pros and cons. Pros About weight, the board is quite sturdy at about 1.1kg. Sorry about my shitty light. It sits firmly on the desk even at long hours of hardcore gaming. And it is not too heavy when you do want it to bring it elsewhere. Detachable cable, so you don't need to find your keyboard cable in the middle of a mess. Sturdy, case quality, south facing LD, PCB stabilizers, awesome so I can change it in the future. Now here's the cons. 3 ports but no pass through. I would like to see it being implemented in the future models if they still keep this aspect. The next con is can't change the FN key combination. So final verdict, should you buy this board? Absolutely. The pros significantly outweigh the cons. And with competitive pricing, this kit is fantastic for people who just want an easy assembly process without worrying too much about quality. And if you are going to up your game, I would highly recommend modding. Even though I haven't done any mod on this keyboard yet, I believe the time and effort put into modding this kit will be great. I will have a video detailing it soon, so stay tuned for that. And that's it, thanks for watching, bye! Oh, and here's the sound test.